One of the biggest problems that people have with success is failure. You cannot have success without failure. You can try, you can plan, you can plot, but it's just not going to happen. This week, I had the pleasure of speaking to someone that learned that lesson and they learned it well. But before we get into that, join today. <laughs> when I was talking to this person, it brought up some memories of how I used to think. Many people, when they fail, there's a lot more weight on that failure than just the lack of a desired outcome. Totally, totally different set of notions that populate a really rugged outcome and make it worse. When you fail, your expectations also fail. And it will seem like they're one and the same, but they're not because your expectations is like this big mountain with a bunch of caves. There's a lot more to it than what the surface would have you assume that it is. When I was talking to my client, we were just going back and forth because we've talked for a while. And, you know, she was really, really upset in the beginning because she tried stuff. It didn't work out. She kept trying stuff. It just didn't work out. And I told her she had an information gap problem. The reason that you're failing fast and furiously is your repository of experiences, knowledge, and trends is very, very limited. So someone else who's a little bit more seasoned wouldn't have half the failures you are. But that's not to say that they didn't have the failures at some point down the line. Everyone's walking a different journey. Now, this is the problem. And it, I see it all the time. I see it on YouTube. I see it on Facebook. You have people that try something and they are spending more time looking at what the other kids are wearing to the playground. Hey, I made $50,000 this month on Amazon FBA. Hey, I made $50,000 this month from storage auctions. Then the person who's not making nowhere even close to that amount of money is sitting there scratching their head as they sit on their stoop of despondency saying, what am I doing wrong? That person can't be smarter than me. They look the same. I know him. What's so special? The thing that people miss with that type of thinking is you don't know the complete story. Of that other person's success. There are so many variables to success. And no one. Let me repeat that. No one becomes successful. In a vacuum. There's always other people. There's always other things. There's something else that's going on. And it's not necessarily a secret. Or magic jelly beans. As I like to say. It's just. It could be something as. Hey they have. $100,000 in the bank. You know, there are many things that people don't talk about. They could have uh, credit cards, you know, like six credit cards with $50,000 limits. Those type of resources can make a normal looking person, a normal person look exceptional because you don't know what they're working with. It is rare. The person that starts a business with 10, 20, 100 bucks and go on to make a full time income. It's rare. It's very, very rare. It doesn't happen all the time. So many people that start their businesses start with a little scratch. So or a little knowledge. There, There could be something, that extra little thing that you don't know about that made them successful. But you think that you have started off even Steven. The gun went off at the same time and you both started running. That's not the truth. That's not even close to the truth. You have to understand, in success, there is so much failure that 
you will maybe knock your head at times because you don't think that you're doing it right. Biggest problems that I see is the invariable comparing and contrasting your success or lack of to someone else. I did it when I was in the storage auction business. There were people that would come out. They look like the deliverance people from the show. with Bert, Well, not the show, the movie Deliverance with Burt Reynolds and some other people I cannot remember right now. But they were looking really, really rough. And I was like, look, dude, you're sophisticated. You used to sell commercial. You're selling commercial office furniture. How can these yahoos wear your ass out? And <laughs> those yahoos wore my ass out. I didn't know what I was dealing with. In the beginning, I failed. Just like my client did. Now, the good thing is she stuck with it. This is the thing that I see. People will say, hey, I got 100 bucks. I'm going to try picking. Hey, I got 500 bucks. I'm going to try storage auctions. And if it doesn't work out, I only lost $500. Do you realize that if you fully understand universal law and how your mind works, when you say stuff like that, you actually program yourself for failure. You're saying, hey, I'm going to throw 500 bucks out there and I have a strong suspicion that I'm going to lose my money. That's what you're saying. You're not saying, well, what we're going to do is take 500 bucks and we're going to take that 500 bucks and we're going to learn from those experiences. When you operate in a closed loop, it will strangle your ass. And I, I see this. It's just like someone was talking about my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is going on five years, being five years old. And I consistently put videos up. It didn't happen overnight. Actually, I even put some graphics up in another video where pretty much the first 14 months, I was getting 50, <laughs> 60 views a day. I mean, it, it, that's just how it was. But I was happy because those views were high quality views and my conversion rate was crazy. You know, 60, 80 people a day watch the videos. I made 10 sales. My conversions was just awesome. I was real happy with it. But I, I think the thing that helped me with YouTube, there was no one on YouTube talking about the stuff that I was talking about. So I couldn't really compare and contrast because there was no one to compare and contrast against, which brings up another point. If you will go out and do something different, you may literally discover a gold mine. But why don't people go out and do things differently? Because of the fear matrix. I may fail. And going back to what I was talking about earlier, about what else is wrapped up in failure. Say, you know, you, you're doing picking and it's been six months, it's been a year, and you really don't make any money. In your mind, you're getting ready to chalk it up to like magic jelly beans or someone has an unfair event. No, this is what's going on. Number one, you're not learning from your mistakes. Number two, you're not taking it seriously. When I got in the storage auction business, people were like, ha, 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 you're Fred Sanford. It was just a big joke. So these type of oper income generation businesses are still seen as kind of fringe, esoteric, strange as fuck. So you go knowingly going in, those expectations, the ones I spoke of earlier, are going to be wrapped up on top of the failure. So say you, your goal is, I want to make 500 bucks a month as a picker or a storage auction person, extra for my family. And you go out there and you do it, and it doesn't happen. First of all, the fact that it was strange, Frenchish, esoteric. And that show, French, I love that show. If you've never seen it, there's 100 episodes on Netflix. Check it out. Love Walter. Walter's my dude. 
fringe science. It's just so weird. So you've got that apprehension on top of the failure. You have your broken expectations on top of the failure. So it's not just, hey, I wanted to make 500 bucks, only made two, only made three. No, 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 no. The lack of not making the monetary goal is not as damning as the expectations. Those expectations are what really, really create the angst, the drama, and to add more fuel to the fire, you have people in two corners. You have folks who are going, you go, girl, you go, dude. And you have other folks told your dumb ass that wasn't going to work out, but you didn't listen to me. No, no, no. You didn't listen to me. No. I told you that shit's stupid. The people who are clapping for you in your corner, you cannot hear them because of the echo of those few words from that group of people that dissented and didn't support you. You're going to take that negative energy in and you're going to run it through your step up converter and it's going to have more impact, more damage than the people who are in the corner clapping for you based on how you've been indoctrinated in the educational complex, the educational industrial complex. That's why these things happen because you didn't get the gold star. No one liked it on Facebook. You know, there's a social term for that. I can't think of, but, It'll come to me. It'll come to me. But the whole deal is operant conditioning. The really simple definition is if you do something favorable, you get a favorable response. Like when you show up on time and your teacher pats you on the head or you get a gold star, or you get a like on Facebook. Operant conditioning. That is one of the problems with being successful in America because growing up through the industrial educational complex, that is ingrained in you. So if you do things and you don't get the desired outcome, that is just clashing against your operant conditioning development, which has been pretty much your lifestyle. That's one of the reasons that when I was growing up, you know, the older people, those older generation, they knew what they were talking about. They may have not been able to quantify it or give it a name like operant conditioning, but they knew that to steadily praise you or to reward you for doing things would dampen and circumvent your drive. There's actually studies on that now that suggest the same thing. Too much praise is damaging. What I call the faux self-esteem complex. It's like, oh, you're wonderful. You're the best thing since the sun. With no results. It's one thing if praise comes and there's results. It's another thing if there are no results, no action, but praise. So when you are failing... All of that stuff comes into play. All of that stuff is the reason that the failure is so hard for you to deal with. And this is the genesis of what I'm telling you. Without failure, you will not be successful. The more that you fail, and this isn't fail as fast as possible. You know, you may fail several times over a decade. But the more that you fail... And able to stay motivated, keep your energy and enthusiasm to stay on point, to stay on track and not become so despondent that you stop. You will gain more experience. And as you gain more experience, you'll be able to connect the dots and you'll be more successful. I'm at a point in my life where I can truly say I am not afraid to look like a fool. I'll tell you, in uh, one of my groups, I was running T-shirt ideals by and 
I was flat up told your designs are ugly. <laughs> it's other stuff. This shit sucks. And I was like, okay, man, when I first started this, because when I left the storage auction business, I was a big fish in a small pond. And I went to being plankton in the ocean. So it was a mind trip. And in the beginning, if I had got that type of feedback, it would have been rough. I wouldn't have stopped. That's just not my mindset. But I was able to like, okay, that's not working. That's exactly what I said. Okay. You know, it's like, and it got a little testy and I say, like, Hey, thanks. You know, that's your opinion. And not once was I offended or ready to quit or just like, fuck this shit. No, because I know it comes with the territory. I may literally design actually the few that I there's a few that people think are hot because I am doing t-shirts and I wasn't bothered I didn't lose sleep you got to get to that point that when things do not work out the way that you want them to work out otherwise known as failure you can't lose your mind or motivation you can't do that and expect to have long-term success because you will have so many unknown variables that will pop up in your life that it's just strange how that happens. It is just amazing that you will think you've got the game plan together. You've got everything set up. You've got plan business plan A, business plan B, business plan C. And then you go rent the spot. Then you find out that the city council has changed the zoning and you can't have that business there anymore after you sign the lease. Oh, they didn't post it because you went to city hall or the business license department and it was like, yep, this is good. And then the clerk who was new didn't tell you that the law was going to change on November 25th. Oops. I'm telling you. When I got my first business license, I went to the website. I thought I knew I had the money in the pocket because they only took cash or a business check. Thought I was ready. Got in there and it was like, whoa, well, if you're going to do this, you need to go over here. And then you need to go talk to an engineer and planning. And I was like, well, we're just going to slap some paint on the walls. Nowhere was that stuff on the website. But if I had talked to someone who had gone through the business license process in uh, Decatur in DeKalb County they will say oh that's what they're going to do to you because anyone else like okay if you go there let me tell you what's going to happen if you are moving into a building that is not they don't have plans on if you're going to do any modifications and they do consider paint painting the walls as modification you're going to have to have a print a diagram of the building I actually because I have a few artistic skills, I was able to get some graph paper and I draw and I measured the building. I, I drew it up myself and the guy took it. So because to do another plan, you know, if hiring a graphic artist or a, a draftsman, it was like 150, 200 bucks. And that wasn't so bad, but it was the time it was going to take because we needed to get open. So I drew that up in like two hours from, you know, getting back, finishing, measuring the spot, putting it on graph paper, and I, 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 I'm i telling you, I actually put, like, I have a friend who owns an engineering company, and I remember looking at plans and stuff, so I started putting those little symbols and stuff like that, and I made it a photocopy, and the guy bought it. So, understand, when you're going into these things, there's so many things that are going to happen, and it doesn't mean that you're a bad person, doesn't mean that you're stupid, doesn't mean, no, it's just, your experience level, you have an information gap. Anytime that I fail, I look at it as an information gap. I didn't have enough information. And sometimes the only way that you can get that information is to engage and go forward. That's it. You could talk to your mama. You could talk to your daddy. You could talk to other business owners. But for your business, that sometimes is the only way that you're going to get those numbers to help you make better numbers in the future is to go out there and fail. It's ugly to some people, but if you condition your mind, this is what I'm talking about when I mean the hustler's mindset. 
when we had this recent debacle with the children of Congress, because I, I, I lump all of them into the same group, with uh, the Republicans being the bullies and the most staunch whiners. And I just looked at this, and it didn't faze me. Number one, they were going to have to solve those problems. They're not going to keep this. They're not going to let the United States of America go bankrupt or shut down. Are you kidding me? Not going to happen. Which is why I thought the Republicans were dumb as fuck because you can't win. Now, this is just me, and I'm not going to take too much time with this. If there was like some type of grand manipulation, that was a distraction move. Because you have to ask yourself, what else happened while everyone else was looking at that? Sun Tzu, the art of war, banish your swords. That was a distraction. There was something else going on. Because none of these people are stupid. But that's my conspiracy theory for you today. But the whole deal is, even when that was going on, I didn't, I was like, so? I am going to get mine. If I have a business... As a matter of fact, I do have a business that changed dramatically. Many of you who are listening to this, you learned to me from the storage auction business. Newsflash, storage auctions are not hot anymore. I knew that was coming. I'll be unvarnished with you. I am surprised the craze lasted as long as it did. I couldn't believe it. Because I figured year, then it would just water down. No, it went strong for almost three years. I was blown away. Totally, totally blown away. But I planned for that event because I knew it was coming. Even though it was delayed, I knew at some point it was still going to come because storage auctions are inherently hard. Anyone that tells you, oh, they're easy, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. Just note that. So when it came to the end, I was like, okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because the original plan, just to give you a little background about me, I wanted to write the great American novel, this fiction novel. But Hustler Mind said, I was like, okay, what's going to pay the bills? And that's just a practical decision because I have 14 books written and there's only like six, seven dealing with storage auctions, Craigslist and stuff. And the other ones are fiction. And they're under a pen name. And no, I'm not going to tell you because I want to see what I can do as a naked artist. And what I mean by that is if I go ahead and like onto my channel and it's like, hey, I write this, I would get more sales. I have a lot of people and you don't want to say thank you to those people if you're listening who support me, who have bought everything I've done and they're in my corner. And I really, really appreciate those people. I want to get a new group of people who like that new thing. And the only way to do that is to do it in the blind. So no one knows who I am. And we discussed this in our writing group because it's like, hey, you know, just write on the pen name and let your fans know that you have this other stuff. And that's not my goal. My goal is to write books and have them be so awesome. They blow up. You know, that's the goal that just to just blow up. And then when, you know, it's rolling, I can come out like, yeah, I wrote that, too. That's how I wanted to go, because it's a challenge for me. I'm not taking the easy way out because I always wanted to be a creative person. And this is something I can do the rest of my life. The storage auction business gave me. So many storylines. I haven't even told all of the storage auction stories, giving you all the stuff that can't. I stopped that because the TV shows were, were picking my pockets and people were like, oh, yeah, they wouldn't do that. The TV shows are fake. They had to get their storylines from somewhere. And a lot of shows had elements because there was only a few that where they just totally mugged me. So that that just kind of pissed me off. So I was like, okay, you can't get what you can't find. Now that it's coming down, I'm going to put out the second edition of the Porn's Always in a DVD player. And there's other stuff I'm going to add to it. Because now it's they're, they're, they're just kind of like going away. 
just not yeah they're they're losing they're losing ratings and this is kind of with the hustler mindset you can position yourself for success later if you don't lose your energy and enthusiasm that's what happens because you failed and for many people that's it and where you see this frequently is people who have romantic relationships that go sour. I'll never get married again. I was married and I got divorced. I have not said I will never get married again. I said, I don't know if I would get married again. That's my standard response because I don't know. Because the minute I got a friend who, who was like, I'll never get married again. And anytime you were talking about getting married, he just like cuss you out and all this. Then a few weeks ago. He got married this summer. I get to talk to him on the phone. He's like, yeah, I'm getting married. I'm like, I'm like, I'm glad I'm walking. I would have wrecked my car. You were so staunchly opposed to the institution. of marriage. So understand things change just because you are not successful today. Doesn't mean you will not be successful tomorrow. There's so many elements that go into this. So many elements. Now that you fail, you got some choices to make to give up like a scared little bitch or to say, hey, and look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? This didn't go the way I want. And there's nothing wrong with saying you're disappointed. It didn't go the way you want it. You're disappointed. That's a natural emotion. The problem is, is when that disappointment turns into despondency and depression it saps you of your energy. It saps you of your drive. And next thing you know, you're not doing anything. You cannot be successful sitting on your ass. You cannot be successful f- uh, being afraid to fail. I'll give you an awesome testimony of failure. And this will deal in the dating arena. There was someone I was crazy about. Crazy about. Asked her out. She wasn't interested. I don't have the personality of I'm going to hound you. I'm going to ask you out 20 million times. I think that is tantamount to pimping yourself. It's just me. That's my opinion. And it's like, okay. And I, I, I have the standard response. Like you say, no, I'm never asking you out again. And I, it hasn't happened. That's something I said I'm never doing. And typically... When I get that type of response, it's like, she's not interested. I'm not going to try to convince you of my greatness. I'm just not going to do it. So five years later, I'm at a party, chilling, and I see her. And this is like the first time I've seen her in a long time. And you could have thought we were like the best of friends. I, I took notes of stuff and I, I made, some, you know, I, I did a few things. You know, I'm always playing games and I'll go from one room to another, see if she show up and she showed up. And no, I'll, I'll just speak to the end. Well, did not ask her out. She did not ask me out. But I knew in my heart of hearts that if I asked her out, she would have said yes with glee. And the reason is I was not properly evaluated five years ago. And people do that all the time. And do the social sanctions. You know, it's rare that a woman's going to like, you know, when you ask me out, I really thought you were this. But, you know, you're a hell of a guy. And I'm going to ask. No, 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 no. That that happens in the movies. <laughs> and it was just smug satisfaction. Because when you fail and you don't stop and you keep working and you keep doing what you need to do, you command the respect of other people. I had friends who thought I was nuts to do YouTube. Book came out. They bought the book just to support. I mean, so understand just because it's not rolling out the way that you want it to roll. Doesn't mean that it will change and not change in the future. Another part of this, a guy that I used to work for. Oh, oh, my God. You don't understand what a moment this was. A guy I used to work for who was an ass many, many years ago. He was a foreman. This is during my bum days when I was living in the boarding house. 
the guy was always on my ass because if you didn't know this, I'm actually brown. Some people consider that black, but I'm really chocolate brown. And sometimes other black people can be really hateful to other black people who are different, i.e. me, a nerd. And actually, that's a cuss word in the black community. You use the word, hey, I'm a nerd. Oh, stop that. You're not a nerd. And he sensed that about me, and he just rolled my ass relentlessly. I needed the job. I needed the money. I had to suck it up and take it. So I put up a Craigslist ad. And this is recent because I needed some help with a project. And guess who was one of the people to respond? Guess who is ass out? Many bad things have happened to him. That dude. So when we meet in the Starbucks, because I saw, I recognized the name and I was just like, I didn't think it was him, but I remember the name. So he comes in and he walks in and I see him and I'm like, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Sat down and interviewed him and told him, was like, and showed him website. And it's like, yeah, here are the books I wrote and everything. The look on his face, it was priceless. It was absolutely fucking priceless. No, I didn't hire him. And no, I didn't tease. I just told him shortly. It's like, you don't have the skills that I need for my organization, which is true. He didn't have them. It, it would have been a training. It, it would have been a training situation. So, you know, just. The satisfaction is just incalculable because this is what will happen to you if you do not stop. If you do not let failure define you and make you just say, hey, I can't do no, you know, if you're tapping out, it's like, I'm not going to do it. You will have experiences like this and the more that you go through, the more rewarding these experiences will be because it is freaking awesome that you can be in such a horrific place in life. And as you learn about how the world works, how your mind works, what to say to yourself to never, ever speak negatively of yourself. That's something I had to learn. I will reverse my thoughts. If I'm getting ready to say something stupid, I will stop in mid thought and reverse it because it all counts. And for me, some people hearing that is like, well, you know, that really doesn't make a difference. Let me explain to you what's going on inside your skull. I want you to think of your mind as a hard drive, this big, amazing hard drive. And every time you have a thought that, Needle scrap goes across the hard drive and deposits and creates data. So, in <clears throat> excuse me, in this hard drive, your mind never shuts off. You may go to sleep, but your mind doesn't go to sleep. Your mind continues to power your heart, the pump blood. It never ever shuts off. So. While you're having these negative thoughts, which can influence your dreams, you have this needle writing negative data more than it's writing positive data. Now, what happens when your hard drive has all this negative data, fragments, your hard drive slows down. As you put more and more negative data and it starts to overwrite the positive data, you, it, your computer, it doesn't work right. And if you really have a massive amount of negative data being written on your hard drive, it crashes. That's what's going on in your mind. As you start to rewrite all that negative stuff and to fill it with positive stuff, because this is the weird thing. There is no limit to the amount of positive stuff that your mind can take and absorb. It can absorb all the beauty. It, 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 I'm always amazed at singers and artists who have 30, 40, 50, 60 songs. And they can go out and do a concert and perform 10, 15. 
it's just that amazes me but that's part of the the ability of your mind there is no limit to the, the amount of positive stuff but there is a limit to the amount of negative stuff this is what happens when you get these poor tortured souls who go out to schools with guns and shoot children they have a massive amount of negative things going on in their mind and they snap you will go into depression you might have a stroke you might develop disease there is only a limit of how much negativity your mind can deal with before it starts to create some adverse consequences internally and externally but positive stuff you it's like it's like it's fat free ice cream you could keep eating it you could keep eating it you could keep and it just keeps going in there and it's amazing and a lot of people don't know this that's why sales and personal development are so closely related because as a salesperson you have to be on it you got to have the positive self-talk i want you to know some things back in the day when i was a kid and you see athletes mess up they cuss themselves out they'll go throw helmets and you'll still see that to a degree but not as much you'll also see something else too you'll see superstars you know like calvin johnson They'll do a touchdown, and they'll just give the ball to the ref. I think Emmitt Smith was like that. You, you will see these guys. They don't get too high. They don't get too low. People are learning, and a lot of athletes have a sports psychologist because they know that you can spend hours in the gym, running track, running the field, running your routes, running your drills, learning your plays, but if your mental environment is funky, all that hard work can go down the drain in an instant. If you get your mind together first, everything else will follow suit. There are, more, there are people who do what I call external ornament, ornamentation, like Christmas tree decoration. Uh, you see like the woman who has flawless makeup, hair is perfect, wonderful nails, Nice shoe, nice bag, but she weighs 300 fucking pounds. I mean, to some people that was offensive, but that's a problem. There's more effort. Same thing. I've seen this with guys. You know, flawless. They dress well for a big guy. I want you to think about this. If you have anybody elderly that's in a home or assisted living facility right how many 300 pound 60 70 80 90 year olds you see not that many not that many because there's a serious load on all your organ functions i'm a big guy i'm 255 but I have muscles you can see when I put my shirt on. You can even see them in my legs. So that's a lot of lean meat. I have fat I need to lose. But there's there's a lot of leanness. When I did my body composition thing, I was like 20. It's still high. I was like 24% body fat. I'm more solid. So you got to understand. You can't, you know, and that, that's me following my own advice. I'm working on the inside more than I'm working on the outside because you see me running around town. A lot of times I look like a bum. I need to stop that. <laughs> but I'm working more on the inside, educating their mind, doing that stuff. And, you know, speaking of the gym, you will fail. Six months, seven months ago when I started back, I was deadlifting like two something. I can yoke 545. Before I got to 545, I missed 515 several times. Just couldn't do it. But I kept going on and I did some backloading. See, and there, there's this, this cycle. This is what I'm talking about. Just because you can't do it today doesn't mean you won't be able to do it months from now. But you can't get to the months from now if you stop doing what you're doing today. And that's the thing. People like just stop and then it's like, I'm doing me. I'm trying to figure me out. No, you're a scared little bitch. You got your feelings hurt. You you got yourself in a position where operant conditioning kicked your ass. 
And this is why we love leaders. This is why we love people who go against the grain. When you do something that you know that a lot of people are going to go, mm, I don't know about that. Mm. Woo, really? Mm. Do any of you have that aunt or that uncle? All they can do is, just, mm, I don't know about that. Mm, mm, mm. You know, just disapproval, just ringing all throughout their voice. I have people like that. I don't talk to them because <laughs> I am not going to be infected by their negativity because I know better. I know that. And, you know, this isn't to be harmful and this isn't to say don't love your family members. But if you have certain family members who are an exceptionally negative, it is not in your best interest to spend a lot of time with them. Holidays may be something but don't spend too much time with them because they're going to try to contaminate you with that negativity. Because when you come up and you're being successful and they're still negative, it, it creates clash and conflict and it creates problems. A lot of problems. So understand, failure is not the end. Failure doesn't define you. It's just a part of the process of success. And I touched on many different things from business, working out, dating, because that's your life. Your life isn't just a business. Your life isn't just, you know, whatever, you know, if you're doing eBay or Amazon, you know, you're probably married. If you're not married, you got family. If you, your life is bigger than that thing that you're allowing to weigh you down and make you feel less than who you are. And as you gain success in each quadrant and section of your life. It builds up and you become better and you become more robust and you become successful. Success is a journey that is filled with the rocks and the avalanches and the volcanoes of failure. It's just it. That, that's just how it is. And if you learn to smile through all that, keep your wits about yourself and not go butt fuck back crazy because things didn't work out, you will be successful. You will be successful in everything that you try and maintain. It's not enough to start it and then dip. So understand. Success is a wonderful thing that can be yours if you're willing to continue to push. Alright, this is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you on the good side.